It is the duty of the free man to resist tyranny at every turn. Every man will either watch his freedom stripped away or take action to protect what he loves. Introducing the A3, the newest revolutionary body armor from Armored Republic. The A3 is the new standard for lightweight multi-hit body armor. A3 plates are incredibly light at 4.6 pounds. The patented design captures fragmentation while remaining multi-hit capable. The A3 will stop up to M80 ball, yet comes in at only 0.7 inches thick. The A3 is the thinnest NIJ.06 compliant or certified composite standalone plate that includes the drop test. The A3 is the first of its kind, patent pending, that combines an alloy strike face with polyethylene backing, revolutionizing body armor technology by providing strength and durability while remaining sleek and maneuverable. The A3 is the new standard in lightweight body armor. The fight against tyranny just got stronger. Where's the garland? Where's the lights? We got oh. a Christmas tree right there. Oh, there you go. There we go. We're, we're working on every every show. We're gonna add another Christmas decoration. Every show? Yeah, every show. What was the, the change for today? That was up on. That was up yesterday. I, I adjusted a little bit more. <laughs> That's my bad. <laughs> Whatever. That's my bad. At least Jacob's wearing a Christmas. Happy Friday. Here. Today, <laughs> uh, Elon Musk is gonna release the Kraken. <laughs> the Kraken. Uh, so actually, no. literally. <laughs> Um, you know uh, the Kraken usually is like nothing. No, it's going to be no, something. Have, it's coming from Elon. We it's coming from had Elon. One Kraken. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Everybody keeps <laughs> saying he got a Kraken. <laughs> Who's got the Kraken? Okay, real quick, tell me the lady who says she's going to release the Kraken during the election time. What was yeah, her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, old girl. Liz or something. There's a woman. <laughs> Only thing he remembers is There's the a woman. Kraken. Yeah, I know. And right. We forgot yeah. who it she was. was. And, and the other lawyer guy yeah. who, who's a little nutty. Pillow? My pillow? No, no. No, no he wasn't a lawyer. Ah. Uh. <laughs> He released he, a pillow. Yeah. He, he, nope. that was, no, that's not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Happy Friday. Welcome to Cross Politic. Pastor Toby, Doc Knox, I'm the water boy, and I got my, my water break team. My water break team. Dr. <laughs> Jacob Daniel is yeah. in the studio with in us. In the house. From California. Don't you mean his wife team, came up and visited. Teammate, not whole team. Like, Oh, oh, he's yeah. a teammate. Not Waterbury the team. teammate. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's that's part, the whole team. I'm like, part of the team. The rest of his team's like, ah, why do you throw us under the bus? <laughs> it's like a version of pronouns that doesn't work. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> so it all the time. right now, Elon Musk is is supposed to, sometime this Friday evening, yeah. going to release oh, I'm all check. the details on the Hunter Biden story suppression by Twitter. Um, and he's going to release all the details. So sometime. Yes. So it might happen during the show. It might happen after the show. But you guys, yeah. you know, check it out. If it comes up during the show, we're going to talk about oh, it. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, okay. on the, like live. Hey, home is where you build your legacy, where traditions are started, seeds are planted, meals are shared, and stories are told. Home is where you prepare to go out into the world. Finding the home that's perfect for your family is a big job. Story Real Estate is Moscow's top real estate team. They give people real estate advice all over the country. Family homes, investments, land, new construction, or commercial. They know real estate. If you've thought about a move to Moscow, or actually anywhere in the country, mm. reach out and get connected with a Story Real Estate agent. Wherever you're going, they can help guide you home. Visit storyrealestate.com. He's 13 minutes late, boy. He's color people. He's- He's way late. You want to give a little more introduction to, to Jacob Daniel, Dr. Doctor, doctor Jacob Daniel. D- Dr. Jacob Daniel. The good doctor. Are you the president of the Heritage Council? The I'm, CEO? I'm the director. The director of the Heritage Council, um, bringing uh, Christianity to the public square. That's the whole idea. Roughly, yeah. right? Yeah, the vision is to advance the truth of Christian faith and promote its excellence in public life. Very keeping good. Yeah, um, the message and action together. Very good. Promote uh, its excellence in public Jacob life. is married to Prita. Yes. And they moved to California 10 years ago to be missionaries. Exactly. To California. Yeah, I was just uh, telling you, you, right? Yes. So thank you. Time to give back to the West what's been given to us for a long time. Well, Ooh. thank you. You know what? Praise I just want to let you know, Jacob, you did something that most Americans won't do. <laughs> so praise God. Right. We need, we need missionaries in California. <laughs> absolutely. So it, Jacob, It's absolutely an honor, I would say. You know, there's so much here that people are taking it for granted yeah. that they need to be fighting for and not just fighting, but also, you know, be bold enough to proclaim, right. to yeah. amplify around the world. Yeah, yeah. Unashamed. Yeah. Unashamed. Thank you, Jacob. Unashamed. Yeah. I, now, I asked you offline, um, I said, your last name's Daniel. Is that the American version of your last name? And and you've said, 
No, it's not actually. My actual name is Jacob Daniel. Yeah. And, my, and my how, parent, how did that? Yeah. Well, even even Americans have two first names, just so you know. It <laughs> happens to all the, to the best of us. Yeah. So my parents come from the south of India. And uh, when I was born, they gave me a Christian name because of their heritage. Yeah. Uh, they came to know the Lord personally later in their life. But they come from a line of Christians that uh, they try to connect themselves with the church that St. Thomas, the disciple of Jesus, wow. established. Uh, they call themselves Mar Thomas, those who belong to Thomas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, in my family, so everyone has a Christian, Christian heritage in India. Because I don't, I mean, I'm sorry, but I just don't think of India that way. It's one of the oldest traditions. So if you see the disciples went, yeah. the reason because of uh, the Jewish community that came and settled in the south of India. Okay. So when the disciples came to preach the gospel to them initially, uh-huh. Uh-huh. to the Jews first, yep. right? And the gospel kind of spread in that region and my parents kind of, yeah, come from well, that I region. Know. It's just, just like American white folks. You I know. know what I mean? <laughs> Jesus is somewhere else. We like, had the gospel for America. I yeah, yeah, Gabe. I always, think it's, I, I always think it's so cool. That this, this, <laughs> this uh, you know, sort of connects with what you're saying is that um, even when God was judging the Jews and scattering them hmm, in the exile as he yeah. did, um, and of course, you know, some of them returned under Nehemiah and Ezra and so forth. And that, that's where there's a, there's a Jerusalem, there's a temple, there's a Remnant, center there for yep. Jesus to come. Mm-hmm. But par- even in judgment, God was establishing colonies mm. all yeah. over the known world, including India, yeah. Egypt, Africa, yeah. Europe, Greece, Rome. There's Jewish synagogues all over the known world. Planting seeds. So that when Paul and apostles and company spread out to go... Com, uh, do the Great Commission. Uh, let me give you a couple of facts. Yeah. Uh, if you if you see uh, Nicaea, there was a representation from the Church of Malankara, which is from the south of India. Wow. Right? It, at Nicaea. Yeah, exactly. And not just that, but also most of the missionaries that go around India and around the world from India are from that region. Hmm. So, Southern India. Southern India. Wow, that's really neat. Dude, yeah. you're, you're blowing my mind, man. That's Thank right. you. Yeah. That's really cool. That's hey, you heard it here now. on Cross Politics. Yeah, yeah. That's, right. that's right. So, All right, speaking of Jews. Um, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, what, a, what a great segue. What a great segue. <laughs> so, hey, so, man. You can't I'm not pulling no Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as he puts something over his face, yeah. that's when I'm going to tell him, yeah. turn off the mic, so, turn off the mic. So on water break Sunday night, I, I told John Brandon he should have come on with his mask on. And, but that's oh, yeah, yeah, oh my it was yeah. pretty, we had a good yeah, kick He's out. off the network. We had, yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. We had a good, good laugh out of that. So, so um, Elon Musk, we already mentioned earlier that he's going to release some sort of Kraken or supposedly release a Kraken today, but, but Arthur Brooks was on Squawk Box earlier this week talking about Musk derangement syndrome, which is. Man, it's real. Is it a thing? Yeah. You know, the truth is what you're talking about here is just another example of the fact that activists are trying to bully companies, trying to bully citizens, trying to basically bring all of us into their culture war. And it's time for us to stand up. You know, I've talked about this now for the past six months because I've seen it increasingly. And and I travel around. I talk to CEOs all the time. And one of the things that we need to tell CEOs they're really not aware of, for example, at this point, and ordinary citizens as well. I mean, look, all the best CEOs in America are watching us right now. Three percent of your employees are activists instead of working. And they're blowing up your Slack Mm. channel right now, demanding Mm. that you get involved in a culture war and make political statements. Don't. Do it. Three. The rest of your yeah, employees exactly. are feeling bullied as well. Their coworkers are being bullied by these activists. It's time for us to say, I will not be conscripted into America's culture war. We're going to make good products. We're going to help people. We're going to lift each other up. And by the way, we don't hate each other in this country. I got the data, Joe. 93% of Americans say they hate how divided we become as a country. That other 7% who doesn't hate it, those are the activists saying if you buy a, if you buy a, a Tesla, it means that somehow you believe in hate speech. It's completely absurd and it's total bullying. Uh, hate speech, uh, you buy a heavy. Uh, I, uh, I'm torn on this. Uh, um, I'm torn uh, on this. We hate each other. That's, that's just bottom line. We do. I don't care about the, the, the stats that he's reading. Those stats don't matter to me. 3% of your boys uh, um, or whatever. Yeah. yeah but they, people, but before I say any more, I want to always give our guests the first right of refusal to any clip that we play on the show. Right, so all right, all right. See, I know you're ready to jump all over it, but since we have guests, we, we okay, want to be coming to because you have first right of refusal to comment right, on the Dr. clip. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is what I would say. When we're talking about statistics, what are we comparing it with? Come on now. Right? Okay. Uh, so when it comes to, are we talking about statistics in other nations, other cultures? Or what statistics statistics are you comparing it with in terms of timing? Right. Right. Like 100 years ago or today. So I would say with regards to where we stand today in terms of hate, 
we are in a better place than any other time. Mm. Right? So what we need to be doing is actually redeeming what which is good mm. in terms of what unifies. So the attack on the Western world today is one of removing that which unifies a nation. So one of the examples I give is that- Christian you, nationalism. Uh, so so <laughs> if you, the, the American idea Bless of- you. <laughs> you got one more time, your mic's going off. <laughs> <laughs> the American idea of melting pot was built on that idea, the fundamental idea that we all are created equal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. There is something that unifies us, even right. though there are distinctions. So when it, when it comes to that, any kind of attempt to divide that should raise some red flags. And I think uh, this is kind of like a symptom of that very thing that as to how we can actually identify those things that are yeah. dividing us. And we got to be prepared to actually bring them together to a place that unifies us. And in this okay. case, he's At talking about you buy a Tesla, you're hateful, therefore you're dividing. Exactly. Right. Yeah, but, but I don't know. I. I'm, I tend to be pretty sympathetic to what he said. Yeah, I'm not. And here's why. All right. Here's why. We, we, I think you're right. We live in better times than we've ever lived in before, and that's really fine. I think looking at the people's heart, man's heart, I think they are ready to tear each other apart given the right reason. And what the social justice movement has proved is help giving people the right reasons to be able to go after each other. And I think that's, been, that's, that's what we've seen in the cities. People hate each other. The difference is, is that there are certain things that God has put into place that even though people might have this animosity and hatred towards each other, they still will live with each other with a certain amount of peace because of certain graces of God. Here's one of those graces, and we got it. Virtue signaling is not one of them. Building amazing products that somebody else's needs, that you can supply their needs with, is a grace that somebody says, even though I might have animosity or hatred towards you, I still have to do this job, this mm -hmm. chore. And so what they'll do is they will... In a certain way, that's a grace that suppresses the outworking of that hatred so that people can actually work together to get certain things done. Mm. And I think that when we start virtue signaling, what we start seeing is that those restraints of grace are removed because we start doing things for signaling of virtue rather than for, hey, this is how we love our neighbor. Right. Sure. And so when Christians build yeah. things that are valuable and important and that help each other, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that look, you go back to Black Wall Street, Black Wall Street. You have black people living in America. Oh, it's always about black it Wall is, Street. Because it's come back to line. black Wall Street always, again. Here because it is. I want to I want to keep it from the liberals. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get black Wall Street. When That's you look right. at Black Wall Street, That's you had real. a group of people that were in a very anima animal there was a lot of animosity between black and white people. There was no love there. Right. There was hatred there. Right. And what they did was make amazing, beautiful products and services yeah. to serve people. And, and pr provoke the and, envy of and, 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 and everyone else. And That's people right. came together to come buy those products and to create money and wealth. Right. And the only thing that stopped that was that people didn't implement the laws that were already there on the books. Mm -hmm. Right? But my point is to say is that if we move into a virtue signaling attitude, instead of building and working and creating things that are valuable for each right. other, what we are going to see is that hate not have any suppression from a common grace. Right. Also, from biblical perspective, if we see that there, there's a, uh, we can't assume that it was always, you know, peaceful between the twelve tribes. What brought them together was the center of the temple itself, what they worshipped and who they worshipped. And as a nation, we should be asking who are we, who who is I, it we worshipping together? That. Absolutely. Right. But, but we are not worshipping the same thing. The, the one ahead. thing, the one thing I want to say though, I'm gonna is, let you go first. Thank you. Um, <laughs> is, is that uh, I do think that we have heard a number of stories over the last number of months as the woke um, sort of mob and jihad has continued to push its way through corporate America mm -hmm. um, with you know rainbow flags everywhere and pronouns everywhere and so on. In the in the in the handful of instances where Christians have stood up, yeah, and sent an email to HR or sent a note out and said, "I actually I don't agree with this." <laughs> right. All of a sudden, a whole bunch of other Everybody people come else. out of the woodwork and they're like, "Actually, I don't agree with it either." Yeah. Actually, I don't want to yeah. do it either. And I do think there's something to the statistics he's talking about, at least in some of those anecdotal situations where it turns out. The whole company wasn't excited about the woke thing. Right. It yep. was a small percentage of activists mm -hmm. and. And there were actually probably far more Christians than activists, mm -hmm. but most of them were being cowardly or mm -hmm. cowed, afraid to lose their job, need to provide for their family, any number of reasons. And maybe somebody says, I, I don't think we sh I don't want to do this. Yeah. And but at least in some instances, a bunch of other people come out of the woodwork and it turns out they were the far more of the majority. But part of the reason you get that kind of culture is because whoever your CEO or your leaders in your company have already failed. Yeah. And so... Yeah. Back in nineteen, the early 1940s, Walt, uh, Walt Disney was already dealing with this. He was dealing with the fact that the um, 
the uh, not the, the socialists, but the communists were coming inside of his company through right. the workers' union to try and take over his company. And people were saying, how come they get the closer parking spot? Why is it that when they work hard, they get this spot? And he basically stood up in the meeting, called everybody together and said, listen, if you work hard, you stay late, you give to this company, I believe you should get certain rewards. And if you don't like that, don't let the door hit you with the good Lord split you. He didn't yeah. say that last part. <laughs> I'm, I loosely translate from my brother who's not here to say it. Oh, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> but what happens is he's like, okay, look, we're killing that. Yeah. We're not going to. And so during his time in his reign, that wasn't something that right. took over his company then right. because he fought that way. Instead of saying, listen, why don't you just be like T'Challa? We don't do that here. <laughs> we, don't, we don't do that here. <laughs> yeah. but, but, here, but here's what I want to argue is that virtue signaling is inescapable from companies. No, it's, no, it, no, because it's not. What, but what we're seeing, what we're seeing is this fight over what is public virtue allowed in, in business. That's what we're seeing. Mm-hmm. We're seeing this transition to woke virtue. But I think there's a difference between old classical there's a difference, Christian though, virtue and businesses. Virtue, virtue signaling and virtue. And virtue. Yeah. That's right. Sure. So I don't, I don't want to give them that. Sure. Uh, uh, but but what, what I'm what I'm saying is that I want Christian businesses <laughs> to be virtuous. Yeah. Well, of course. You know. That's no. Like, no. You you want them to be godless. <laughs> No, no, I'm, Gabe, I totally won this argument. Gabe, on Black dropped, Wall where's, Street. Where's my mic? No, I'm I'm like, Thank you. <laughs> Can we take it back? In terms of strategy, we should be thinking about this as well. Um, biblically, if we see the structure is top down, God first, right? Everything under God. Mm-hmm. But in terms of transformation, it's bottom up. We right. recognize that. I think the Christian world is divided between the two. We take positions on both sides. It's not either or. I think we have to have both. It's right. And That's with right. with. The, the woke culture, what we are seeing is that they understood that when they had replaced God and positioned themselves, they had to do it top down. So yeah. they positioned themselves in yeah. places of influence. That's yes. right. And yes. that's how the minority wins the culture war. Right. The 3%. That, that 3%, <laughs> whatever, they, yeah. they get the positions of power because yeah. they know they've got to play God. Exactly. Watch this. Not Black Wall Street. Uh, Walt Disney had 1,200, 1,400 employees. It was the 300 that were part of the unions. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was that's the 300. Right. And they and were the ones like, making the trouble. they were the ones making yeah. the trouble. Right. Again, so he's got a point. And, and Walt called him on it. He He, he, he yeah. won the bet on that, right. saying, I right. bet I got more employees right. who are against this than for this. Right. So, uh, so uh, COVID pandemic news. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, my, my buddy Andrew DiBartolo, we've had him on the show before. Yeah. He messaged me Canadian a bunch pastor. of data um, co- coming from StatsCan and okay. showing that – um, uh, what's the correct terminology? Unaffiliated deaths have spiked. Unaffiliated? Un- yeah, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm messing up the terminology. Uh, yeah, it's like the word. I don't know if that's the word. Um, yeah, it's, so the it's so close. Unaffiliated. Yeah. I, I mean, I know of Hang affiliated on. deaths. Yeah, well, yeah. What, but the no, unaffi- unknown. <laughs> unknown. Oh, gosh. <laughs> wow. There you go. That was tough. That goes uh, on one of those anyway. <laughs> unknown deaths have spiked in every province. What is an unknown death? They don't know no, the why they the died. Cause oh, oh yeah, unknown cause. cause. Yeah. Un- uh-huh. yeah. Unknown Thank death. Thank you. How about this? The good cause. thing is there's a doctor on this show. <laughs> yeah. Not a medical doctor, so don't it's come like, to please, me. Yeah. Please. <laughs> it's like a doctor of paleontology. It's like he just doesn't apply. <laughs> he knows words, though. He knows the meaning of words. <laughs> So, oh man! While you're, oh, go ahead. Were you sit down with that? And what? and so I was gonna. Well, um. Anyways, uh. And and of course, like I, I'm, I'm like almost every day on my Twitter feed. Somebody's I, died. Someone's died. Like this guy was super healthy, yeah. and he just randomly died. Thirty five year old fell over you, dead. Yeah. And, and have you seen the doc that you can't save, otherwise you get canceled? Yeah. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, well. But uh, we're on, but we're again, YouTube, back to but, the statistics thing. I, yeah. I mean. We really do need to ask the question compared to what? And I like while I have no spiked like compared to 2019 till now. I mean, oh, even oh, compared mortality. to so you're saying oh year over year comparisons yeah. of unknown causes before the pandemic oh. to so 2020 guys, remember, to 2021. Remember, to, we had Danae Rancourt on here and talked about yeah, that's yeah. the only way to really tell yeah, yeah, is yeah. all cause mortality, yeah, right? right? Like that's yeah. it. But, and it's jumping up. But even with them busy um, coding everything as a as a COVID death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, but they aren't doing it. That's yeah. the point. Yeah, and and I think I mean they aren't. It's not the coding as a COVID death. Right. I don't think they want to co- code it as a mm, vaccinated death. death. Yeah. The, mm, death. Yeah. Vaccinated yeah. death. Death. So, so why are you bringing that up? Beep. Pfizer death. Okay. Well, but recently right. there's been there's been more studies. I mean, there's always gonna be more studies about what happened in yeah. 2020, 2021. Right. But recently there was the study out by um, uh, the Biological Psychiatric Global Open Science Organization. Who? 
a biological these things up. psychiatry oh, yeah. hey. global open when science. When there's that much money out there, yeah. you have to start yeah. making stuff up. I, I started a scientific organization <laughs> under Wrench Solutions. and uh, Have you still not gotten your check from <laughs> Biden? Oh. <laughs> it's weird. Although we were talking about registering Knox in California, getting a P.O. box for him so he get reparations in California. Dude. 560-something billion dollars they're going to plan. Yeah. To P- P- yeah. P.O. box that, you know? Where there's I money, there's a way. That you're connected I'd... to any of the ancestors prior to ni- yeah. the end of 19th century. I have Indians. I have, I have, I have yeah. American Indians in my in yeah. my, my Chippewa, past. Chakata. Yeah. I think it's wonderful. I feel bad for you because you're going to have to work through that as a, as a and pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to have to pay. Yeah. That's messed up. So what is the study? Anyways, about? the study found that brains of teens uh, uh, under that went through uh, 2022 the COVID 19 shutdown pandemics. Yeah. They they are aging faster than normal. Wow. So what does that mean? Uh, means that high stress. So high stress tends to age people yeah. and particularly will age your brain more. Um, and so if you're in certain environments, your brain will age faster. And so that what they're arguing is, is that uh, w- the shutdown measures in 2020 that happened stressed oh. out the children yeah. and aged their brains faster. When your kids act like toddlers that are like two days fresh off of breast milk, cry me a river. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we, we need to recognize that You're so we, we <laughs> created a world with soft edges. Yes. Come on now. Right? Yep, yep, so yes. what, it's not just what happened after the COVID. Yeah. It's what happened before it, we Preach should be asking. We were yeah. not preparing them to actually face a world that right. is real. Right. You take right on our talk, face. Well, you better preach. Come so, on now. If our listeners are watching, they should look it up like Jeff Koons, who is an artist. Yeah. If you look at his arts, they are all soft edges. And that's the kind of world we created. Mm. And when the pandemic hit, we didn't know how to respond to oh, that. Yeah. And oh, now yeah. we are coming up with statistics right. Right. with all these issues. Well, we were drugging them all. Yeah. I mean, that's what we were doing with the yep. kids. We were drugging them. We were, we were yeah, we, we, it was all no edges, helmets and, yep. and padding for everything. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I just watched Steve Day's tweet. Uh, Elon Musk didn't kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, right. It's been over forty minutes. But, but here, here's the deal: it's like I don't. I, there's no city council. There's no governor. There's no nothing. This goes back to our show with uh, Yuri. There's no evidence that we're going to present to our city council and say, "Look, you guys screwed up big time." Right. You you stressed out our children. Right. You aged our children. You the grades dropped. Uh, educational kid. standards. No, no, because we don't give our kids over to them. Right. But my point is, is what the damage that they did to society, all the jobs that were lost under 2020. Right. No, nothing no is going to them. No one's going to say, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was wrong. Yeah. And here's another study basically saying, hey, you know what? We've aged our children. <laughs> right. Right. But again, I'm kind of like, they were babies anyway. Yeah. yeah. Grow up. Yeah. No, I got I, hard. I, there's an element to that. Get, and, yeah. And, and, and you should look at it as a I'm grace so from God. Mean. But we've been softening our kids in the public school system for decades. And, and of course, they're going uh, to. What do they stress out from? Playing more video games at home? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I'm not going to make this bored. And I think we should also be asking an important question, right? It's commonsensical when we are reading these statistics. It's making sense that, yes, this was expected. But in comparison to another science that was working out during the pandemic, Right, so we should be asking now. People should wake up and ask, okay, was that a real science, or we right. gave into right. something else in right. terms of propaganda, in terms of a system that we were suppressed under in one sense, yeah. and then we coming up to the reality of what it has come to in terms of consequences. Right, and it's the same science you're saying. That is it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, right. We, yeah, we, we need to double check all of this exactly. because we can't trust any of it. And again, back to the to um, Yuri. Yeah, um, Besmanov. Uh, I mean, you know. The, um, don't waste a good crisis. Right. Yeah. You know, so if we can create it, you know, they hit you one, you know, hit you going in, hit you on the way out. Hey, let yeah. me help you with that. I got some medicine for that too. Yeah. So then, the, the, with thinking about Yuri, then okay, if this is the crisis and they've, you know, messed up our kids' brains where they age a little faster over these last two years because of the COVID crisis, then what does normalization mm-hmm. look like for them to fix it? Mm. Yeah, That's right. the thing I want to say. Okay, yeah. so yep. this is coming out to say, oh my goodness, so now what? We need more of your kids in school. Is right. this the way they get? School yearly, year round to yeah, catch up. Something, for the, right? You know, yeah. th- this is yeah, the play. Right. Like this is yeah. uh, this stuff really bothers me. They are setting us up. They are moving us mm. to let them have more power. Right. So COVID caused us to lose uh, ages of our children. So now we have to have them in school more. We get to teach right. more. Yeah. They got to catch up. Whatever. And they'll yeah, yeah. use this. Republicans stuff. will be out next week with a you know proposal yeah. to give even more money to government yeah. schools. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And eleven months. Get your kids out of government. <laughs> schools. Democrats argue for twelve. They're arguing for right. eleven. Is that enough? Yeah, you can go, Toby. All right. Classical conversations supports homeschooling parents by cultivating the love of learning. 
through a Christian worldview f- in fellowship with other families. They provide a cla- classical Christ-centered curriculum, local like-minded communities across the United States and in several countries around the world, and they train parents who are striving to be great classical educators. In the home. Sorry, I need to take a sip of this. Mm. It's so good. Is that your coffee? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's just coffee. Yeah. I already drank the uh, eggnog. For more information and to get connected, please visit their website at classicalconversations.com. Again, that's classicalconversations.com. Y'all ready? Weekend wrap-up. Do we got like a transition to weekend wrap-up? <laughs> Which one is this? That's it. Which one is this? Messiah's thus say it's the Lord. Cut that. Okay. Cut that, Neil. All that right. Good. There we go. Here's the weekly wrap-up. On Monday, the international man. Yeah, Joined right. us on Cross Politic. <laughs> right. Mr. Peter Hitchens took us to school explaining the significance of the passing of Queen Elizabeth, mm. what to look for in the coronation of King Charles, and then gave us his usual droll evaluation of Trump, American politics, Christian nationalism, China, and Russia, with hardly taking a breath between thoughts, but without breaking a sweat because he's the international man. <laughs> on Tuesday, we talked to Michael man. Brendan Dougherty from the National Review about the disrespect for Marriage Act and how honestly Christians will be just fine since God is still completely free to allow pagans to continue to drive themselves off the nearest cliffs of childlessness, fentanyl-related deaths, and demoralizing our national military. And whatever Christians like David French want to get in the car, to go with them. <laughs> he said, yeah. quote, I think believers in God are still coming out ahead. It's the rest of you who lack adequate protection. Ow! Facts. Which, I think, if I remember correctly now, that puts Dougherty squarely in second place as my favorite living papist. He's not going to be papist for long. Behind Anthony Esselin. Oh, okay. <laughs> On Wednesday, it was beer and psalms, of course, but first, we went in a time machine back to 1984, where George Orwell lives, where Yuri Bezmenov was doing his best Ezekiel impression and prophesying the coming communist regime in America through demoralizing, destabilizing, crisis, and normalizing. Yuri pointed out that for many people, they don't even know this is happening to them until they're in a concentration camp getting kicked in their big bottoms. <laughs> in the big bottoms. But then it's too late. Wow. On Thursday, Gabe tricked us into watching the Views discussion of the Disrespect for Marriage Act <laughs> by promising that they had a conservative on the show this time. It turns out Gabe lied his head off. I didn't, well, I didn't lie. And, I mean, I, I set it up. And now way. Yuri Bezmenov is going to kick him in his big <laughs> bottom. We also, we also had Pat. Pastor Jeff Ripple on the show talking about how the communists in his town are trying to co-opt his Christian Christmas parade yeah. because their Chris their, because their Christian Christmas parade isn't a drag queen sleaze fest. Yeah. It made the communists so mad that they demanded that the city council allow them to groom the children of Taylor, Texas, or else. So the city council dutifully organized a groomer parade that will follow right behind the Christian Christmas yeah. parade. Yeah. Apparently, they're planning to have drag Santas ready and willing to have kids sit on their laps. I want to pull all this together with an exhortation to Christians to cultivate a calm and collected sense of outrage. Got that? Mm. Calm yeah. and collected like sense this? of outrage. That's fair. Just like that. There we go. Um, it, this is where the virtue of temperance or meekness really must be embraced. Christians need to be far more outraged at the lies, the treachery, the corruption, and the foul grooming degradation that's being foisted down our throats But we really have to be outraged in a way that is completely consistent with the fact that God is in heaven and everything is right on schedule. That's right. We cannot panic. We cannot lose our tempers. We cannot take out our swords like Peter and start slashing off ears. Oh, man. We must have the peace of Christ guarding our hearts and minds. Mm. And with that peace fully intact, point out the disgusting perversions that our enemies are seeking to demoralize, destabilize, and normalize with various crises and emergencies thrown in to distract us. God is in heaven, Christ is on his throne, and all will be well. He has gone ahead of us, he has entered the capital city of the enemy and assassinated their king. The Mm. devil has been dethroned, death has been swallowed up in victory. Now we are the armies of the Lord, following in his wake, following in his train, doing all the cleanup battles, bringing every thought captive to the Lord Jesus, discipling the nations, teaching them to obey everything he commanded. But we're doing it not from a place of fear or worry. We're doing it from a place of complete confidence. These treacherous rebels will all fall. They will fall in surrender or they will fall in judgment. But they will fall and the nations will bow down before the throne. So we really do need to be outraged by their insolence and refuse to budge an inch in compromise. But we're also outraged because they're fighting a losing battle. They're shaking their fists at the true king who has all authority in heaven and on earth already. Our king is one, and all the rebellion is like a swarm of angry ants on a sidewalk. And therefore, they need to stop all this foolishness, lay down their arms, and submit to Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm. 
So no ear cutting. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, put your sword back. Right. Put your sword away. Keep it in its sheath, though. Can I keep my ammo, though? Keep it I on its sheath. Okay. Just keep it right there. Okay. Yeah. So I can keep buying guns, too. There you go. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. That's really good. You want to stick around for a little bit? I got some questions for you. Yeah. I'd like to talk to you about Christian nationalism a little bit and some other Ooh. things in there. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So if you got a backstage, you're going to really enjoy it. If you don't have a backstage, you should go get you one right now at Fight Life. And if Facebook. Elon releases the Kraken. We're going to talk about that. Too. Yeah, look at that. Uh, if you're I'm single, get married. If you're married, have you some kids. And if you have kids, Go baptize them. Until Monday, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. This is Cross Politic, and we're wishing you a Merry Christmas. Mom always told me to be a good boy, but the world said I could be anything I wanted to be, which is great, because I want to be a problem. No, I won't dive into sex, drugs, or gender confusion. To the world... That would make me a good little boy. I will learn formal logic and adhere firmly to the concept of objective truth. I will commit myself absolutely to the authority of the Word of God and make friends with Augustine, Luther, Calvin, Chesterton, Lewis, and the U.S. Constitution. I hope to grow up and love only one woman, a woman at least as clear-thinking and rebellious in this world as I will be who knows where true beauty lies and who will never let me stop striving to be the biggest problem I can be. I will give my life for hers and aim to have a family large enough to require specialty automobiles. We will worship in a church unashamed of the gospel and live in a community of families doing the same. I will work myself to the bone providing for my family and I will make sure my kids all fall in love with Narnia and Middle Earth, that they will all know how to think that evolution will make them giggle, and rainbows will make them think of Noah and his archiarchy. Like I said, I will be a problem, immune to all that is hip and trendy and now. Singing songs that are centuries old, savoring good wine and great whiskey, dancing and laughing and feasting while the enemies of God scowl and glower in shelter in place. Hey little boy, the world says, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a metastasizing cancer of conservative Christian culture, devouring Marx's impotent, progressive dream and building a resurrected Western world. I want to be a stomper of stupid sandcastles, an exposer of poisonous lies. I want my life to be a monument to the triune creator God who made us all, the kind of monument you and yours will never be able to tear down. Oh, and farm. Thanks for asking. New St. Andrews College. Liberal arts for outlaws. There you go. Putting off writing that proposal again? Yeah, we've been there. Proposal writing can be tough. It takes work. And if you're not careful, you can set up your company for failure. Well, that's where we come in. Smart Pricing Table is an innovative application that focuses on, well, the pricing table. Instead of a static document and constant back and forth, our platform creates interactive proposals that empower your prospects. Not sure if something is needed? Make it optional. Have complicated services that vary? Let your customer do the work with line item upsells. Have reoccurring services? Easy peasy. With Smart Pricing Table, you can create attractive proposals quickly. And our system is built for reuse, so you can get out of that hamster wheel. Give your customers choice and close deals quickly with Smart Pricing Table. Hi, I'm Robert Borton, CEO of Classical Conversations, the world's largest classical Christian homeschooling community. I'm launching a new podcast, Refining Rhetoric. If you like cross-politics or just listen to hear what crazy stuff they're saying today, you will enjoy refining rhetoric. You can find us on your favorite podcast platform. I practice the 15 tools of learning by interviewing great guests, looking at current events, and talking about cryptocurrency.